Hello and welcome to the Surgeon's Burrow. In this video, we will be looking at the differences between a hypertrophic scar and a keloid scar. This is a topic which confuses quite a few students and it is often asked in exams. So, it is an important topic. Let us try and simplify it. A hypertrophic scar is excessive scar tissue which does not extend beyond the boundary of the original incision or wound. The key word here is it does not extend. So, to illustrate this, let us look at these two images. Now, in this image, this is following heart surgery. The incision that the patient underwent was a median sternotomy. Now, this scar, which is excessive scar tissue, it is within the confines of the um, incision. That is, it respects the boundaries of the incision. In this diagram, in this image as well, an incision was made and there is excessive scar tissue within the boundaries of the incision. It does not extend beyond the boundaries. Now, this is in contrast to a keloid scar which extends beyond the boundaries of the original incision or wound. So, a hypertrophic scar does not extend whereas a keloid scar extends beyond the boundaries. So, if you look at this image, this patient has a lot of scar tissue and it is extending beyond the boundaries of the incision, this patient. Now, how do you remember it? How do you uh, not get confused in the exam as to which is which? Now, let us look at the name and what the name means. Now, a hypertrophic scar, hyper means excess and trophic means growth. So, excessive growth is uh, called a hypertrophic scar. Now, a keloid, you can remember this by remembering the phrase keloid goes for the kill. So, if it goes for the kill, it has to extend. If it, is, if it is going for the kill, it does not respect the boundaries of the original incision. When it does not respect that, it means it is going for the kill and it extends everywhere. A hypertrophic scar on the other hand, you think of it like a tree. So, the incision is the root and no matter how tall the tree grows, the, the trunk of the tree will never go beyond the root. So, this is the basic difference between a hypertrophic scar and a keloid. A hypertrophic scar is more common when compared to a keloid scar. Now, let us look at the cause. A hypertrophic scar is because of prolonged inflammatory phase of wound healing. Now, there are three phases of wound healing, one of which is an inflammatory phase and if this inflammatory phase is prolonged, it may result in a hypertrophic scar. The second cause is an unfavorable scar sighting, that is, if it is across the lines of skin tension. Now, this image taken from Bailey in Love, it shows the lines of languor. Lines of languor are nothing but the lines of skin tension. So, whenever you make an incision, it should always be parallel to the lines of languor. Supposing if you make the incision perpendicular to the lines of languor. Now, this is incorrect. This is correct. Supposing if you make an incision which is perpendicular to the lines of languor, that is it is across the lines of languor then it predisposes the patient to get a hypertrophic scar. Now, a keloid scar, the exact cause is unknown, but it has a few associations. It is associated with increased levels of growth factor. That is, post-injury, when the wound is healing, there is excessive growth factor which is produced, which predisposes the patient to develop a keloid scar. A keloid scar occurs in deeply pigmented skin. So, Africans, African Americans, Hispanics, Asians, these people have pigmented skin when compared to the whites. So, people who have pigmented skin are more prone to get a keloid scar. Now, this does not mean that white people do not get keloid scars. White people too can get keloid scars, but it is more commonly seen in people who have deeply pigmented skin. A hypertrophic scar on the other hand has no racial predilection that is it does not depend on the color of the skin. The next difference is that a keloid scar it shows an inherited tendency that means it can be seen in certain families. So, if the four if uh, the previous generations were prone to a, a keloid to developing a keloid scar it can be seen in their progeny. A hypertrophic scar on the other hand does not show an inherited tendency. Now, what is the mode of inheritance? The mode of inheritance is autosomal dominant with 
incomplete penetration with incomplete penetration this is the mode of inheritance now uh, a keloid scar it is commonly seen in certain parts of the body whereas a hypertrophic scar has no particular predilection for any body uh, body site body part now what are those areas of the body which are more prone to develop keloid scar let us look at that so it occurs more commonly in a triangle this triangle the vertices of the triangle are represented by each shoulder tip and the zipper sternum so if you when you draw these three points the triangle that you get so whenever these patients who are prone to develop a keloid scar they um have an injury in this region they are more prone to getting keloids so if you look at this image this patient had acne on the chest the acne healed Uh, leaving behind scarring those scars resulted in a keloid scar another site which uh, is predisposed to keloid formation is the ear lobule so in all these patients in all these unfortunate patients you can see that um, it is occurring in the ear lobule so it most probably occurred after the ear was pierced now in this patient you can see a keloid scar in the ear lobule which we already discussed to be a common site the shoulder tip which we have already discussed to be a common site another common site is the upper chest now this patient also has keloid scars on the arm which extends across the elbow joint into the forearm now this is a not so common this site that is the forearm and the elbow and the arm this is not so common but still it can occur over there a keloid is also commonly seen in the neck now in this patient he has got a keloid in the neck a hypertrophic scar on the other hand can occur anywhere it can occur anywhere in the body and there are two causes prolonged inflammatory phase of wound healing and an unfavorable scar site that is when the scar is across the lines of skin tension moving on a hypertrophic scar it usually appears within 4 to 6 weeks i'm sorry it appears 4 to 6 weeks post injury that means supposing the injury happened on day 0 after 4 to 6 weeks the patient will get hypertrophic scar a keloid on the other hand it may appear years after injury this means the patient may sometimes not not remember that the patient had an injury and the patient will come to you with uh, uh, what looks like a swelling but what is but which is actually a keloid and it is occurring in a site where the patient has got uh, some injury before there can never be a scar formation without injury so in this patient you can see fresh keloids arising in striae gravidarum 3 years after pregnancy striae gravidarum are nothing but stretch marks so this patient 3 years after she was pregnant she has got uh, keloids at the site of striae gravidarum when if we go if we look backwards in this patient who developed keloids uh, in the upper chest that is in the triangle now this patient had uh, developed these scars these keloid scars after acne this is because of acne so in this patient as in this patient as well the keloid scars the keloid scars occurred Uh, quite some time after the injury moving ahead a hypertrophic scar frequently undergoes spontaneous regression that is the patient may not require any treatment at all it regresses on its own a keloid scar on the other hand will never show any regression if you recall a keloid goes for the kill so it is merciless there is no regression now what are the complaints the obvious complaint which we already discusses in hypertrophic scar it is uh excessive scar tissue within the boundaries of the incision a keloid on the other hand as you may recall is it is uh, it does not it extends beyond the boundaries of the incision it does not respect the incision boundaries the other complaints are for a hypertrophic scar patient the patient complains of some pruritus so the patient has some itching but it is not as much as is seen in a keloid scar a patient with a keloid scar also complains of pain and also complains of 
hyperesthesia. Now, if you look at the histology of these two scars, the histology is quite similar. So, both these scar, because there is excess scar tissue, it obviously it will show excess collagen. So, this is common to both, and there is hypervascularity. So, excess collagen and hypervascularity is common to both hypertrophic scar as well as a keloid scar. But a keloid scar, it is more marked in, uh, I am sorry, this excess collagen and hypervascularity is more marked. So, even though it is common in both hypertrophic scars and keloid, it is more marked in keloids where there is more type 3 collagen. Also, the collagen fibers in a keloid are in random orientation, whereas in a hypertrophic scar, they are of parallel orientation. Now, let us look at the treatment of a hypertrophic scar and keloid scar. Now, um, there are some conservative means of treatment, so which is pressure, that is local molds or elasticated garments. Now, there are quite a few companies which uh, manufacture elasticated garments and they also manufacture customized molds. So, in this patient, probably had some um, injury to her neck so this is the nail this is the elasticated garment which goes around the head and in this patient this is like a this is a corset so suppose in the patient has undergone any surgery in the chest or the abdomen that is in the torso this elasticated garment it may decrease the uh, uh, hypertrophic scar or the keloid scar that is formed the next uh, conservative treatment was is a silicone gel sheeting so if you look at this, this is the silicone gel that is being applied over the scar and this is an example of a, of a company which manufactures this uh, uh, silicone gel, uh, gel sheet. Now there is, uh, the next treatment is an intralesional steroid injection and the drug that is injected is triamcinolone. Now while I was doing my internship, there were a lot of patients in Dermat who would come with hypertrophic scars and keloid scars and it was the intern's duty in my hospital to administer triamcinolone in, into the scar. The next treatment is, the next option of treatment is you excise the, the scar and then you give a steroid injection. So here you are giving only a steroid injection but here you are excising the lesion and then you are injecting steroids. The next option is you excise the lesion and after excision you give post-op radiation. This radiation it can either be external beam that is from a distance or it can be brachytherapy. Brachytherapy means um, you, you may brachytherapy means implanting uh, radioactive um, substances into the uh, scar tissue which then emits radiation and it destroys the scar. Now you should remember that any mode of treatment where you are excising the scar, it has a high chance of recurrence. So, all excisions are associated with high rates of recurrence. Now, only for keloids, you might do an intralesional excision. Please bear in mind that an intralesional excision is done only for keloids and not for a hypertrophic scar. Then you can also use laser therapy. This laser therapy will reduce redness. You can also give vitamin E or you can give palm oil massage. Now, this is unproven, but then it is not going to cause any side effects to the patient. So, you can give vitamin E or palm oil massage. So, this concludes the video of a hypertrophic scar and a keloid scar. I hope I was able to shed some light into the differences between these two interesting scars. Thank you.